So in fact, the only thing that you can really control is your website. But social media is important because it can point people there. And mm -hmm. your website has all the important things that you need to let people, journalists, for instance, bloggers, uh, anybody that's going to write about you, everything should be there for them. All of the tools should be there. Uh, links to videos, link, links to songs, all that stuff. It's a good place. It's a repository of all your information. So let's start there and work backwards. Yep. Let's talk about what makes a good website. And this is a perfect time to talk about what might make a good website for a performing artist versus a TV composer that does instrumentals. What are the key elements that absolutely have to be there? Well, one of the things that I'm always shocked when I see this or don't see it is there's no press site and press means either the press that you received or the information for the press okay. vitally important the second thing would be a contact page how do you get in contact with me to book me to buy my material to license my material all that stuff it has to be easy and it has to be such that it's as soon as you log on, or as soon as you, you go to someone's site, it's there. You know right. where it is, and you can get to them. It's got to be obvious. I'm always shocked when, when I don't see that, where I don't find it. If you're an artist, you'd want things like um, uh, thing, uh, stage plots, for instance, are really important. Uh, if someone's going to book you, who's your agent if you have one, or management, or any of those things. You just want to make it easy for people to contact you. And even if you don't have a, a, an agent, you should still have something that says, for booking, contact. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Even if it's info at bobbyosinski.com, yeah. they've got to have something to reach out to you because they can't do it by osmosis. Things like uh, pictures, both uh, color black and white, uh, high res, low res, things like that. Logos, mm -hmm. uh, posters, if, if you, you want a street team, to poster somewhere for you, then you put them there. There's all sorts of reasons why you want to do this and, and make it easy for them. And as, let's look at the same thing through the lens of I'm a uh, an instrumental composer and I'm pitching my stuff mostly to music libraries, occasional music supervisor, and most of my stuff is suitable for um, reality TV. Um, I'm thinking if somebody comes to that website, uh, I'm a music supervisor, I'm a library owner, I want to be convinced that you're good enough that I should reach out to you and I should sign your stuff. So I'm guessing logos of shows they've been on or maybe some sort of laundry list of things that they've been on. It's all to convince credibility builders, right? Yeah, uh, social authorities, they would call it. Right. If they like me, you will like me too. Yeah, yeah. It's that and also just the fact that you want... You want people to know what your brand is. So that's another big part in, in the book. It's branding. It doesn't matter what you do in the music business, you have a brand. So you have to know how to develop that, uh, create it if you have to, and then develop it and take it wherever you need to take it. But that's so important that uh, people understand who you are and what you do. Let's talk about branding for a minute because that, that, uh, we're taking it a step further back now than the website. Um, let's say that somebody's name is Timothy Reardon and Timothy's from some hick town like, and I'm just kidding because Bree is from there, Lafayette, Indiana, <laughs> as, as is Mojo. Not a hick town. It's a lovely city. Really, it is. Um, but, you know, you're out in the middle of the flyover states. Um, and your name's Timothy Reardon, and you're not famous for anything. So how do you build a brand for Timothy Reardon, TV composer, let's say? Um, where do you start with that? Well, let's go to the basics. Okay. The things that you need to do first off are the things that people overlook, and that's you have to select A, a name that you're com comfortable with. So Timothy, if he likes being called Timothy, that's the way he should he should brand himself, but if he likes being Tim or Timmy or Rock or right. any any kind of a nickname, that's what he should go and with stick with one and stick with it. But something that you feel good with. Now, I'll give you a personal example of this. For a long period of time, I was Bob Osinski, and it never felt right to me. And yet, everybody was calling me Bobby. So after right. a while, it just dawned on me. Oh, wait a second, that's who I am. 
And when that <laughs> happened, I felt better. I really felt better about everything. And and I, I can't say that's one of the reasons why everything took off for me, but I did feel better about myself and about things. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you have to pick a color that you like and stick with it. If color should go everywhere. It should go on your profile photo, uh, backgrounds uh, for social media. There we go. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it should... It should be on business cards. It should be on your website, the background on your website. It should be everywhere. So you got to pick a color or two. Sometimes you need a contrasting Do color. Do you get into the psychology of colors, how blue is calming and yellow is something else, and red it could be danger or passion? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, there's, there is a whole psychological factor about yeah. that. But the basic thing is you have to pick something that you like rather than something that's and don't change it 30 days yeah, or even yeah, a right. year later. you got to stick with it. And then number three is pick a font and stick with it. And that font should be everywhere. So the font for your name is part of your, it's part of your logo, but it's part of your brand. So these are really simple things that you can do right away that many people just kind of overlook. And then they wonder, well, why I don't have a brand? Well, yeah, you didn't start with the basics. <laughs> 